Every single one of you likely has an opinion on Notre Dame. And it has nothing to do with their uniforms. It has nothing to do with their mascot. In all likelihood, it has nothing to do with any of their players. I look at my inbox. I look at my DMs on Twitter. And I would probably say safely, the ratio lately has been one out of every five questions pertains to Notre Dame and whether they should join a conference, especially when we found out that in all likelihood we're moving to a conference game only format for the 2020 season, the question naturally becomes, what about Notre Dame? And everyone drools all over themselves and they say, is this our shot to screw Notre Dame? So our buddy Desmond Howard is on a national network the other day and you guys brought this to my attention. You wanted to know what I thought about it. So I have bullet points here. I'm not going to read the whole quote, but I will warmly and accurately paraphrase what he said. Now, he admitted his bias outright, and he said, Notre Dame's always been given a special pass. They enjoy that independence. Now, if everyone plays conference games only, and they're left out in the cold because of decisions they've made, that's their problem. This according to Desmond Howard. I seem to remember once upon a generation, they tried to get in the Big Ten, didn't they? Who was it that blocked Notre Dame? Anyway, I continue. My words, not his. Quote continues now. I don't have a problem with a team or school that thought they are beyond joining a conference. <clears throat> and now because teams are playing within their conference, getting left out in the cold. So Desmond Howard is just telling you that you reap what you sow. And if you get left out, then that's your fault. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, the last three words, those were mine, not his. So here's what I've always noticed about Notre Dame. I've hinted about this a few times, but I don't think I've ever really taken a deep dive into it. But what I've always noticed, ever since I was young, about Notre Dame, growing up way down in Georgia, I always noticed that everyone had some pretty solid feelings on this, one way or the other. But I always realized that everyone was focused on what they thought about Notre Dame. And I've never, now granted, it's understandable I never heard this growing up in Georgia, I never really heard anyone taking up the cause for Notre Dame. Not defending them, taking up the cause, empathizing with their position, in other words, putting yourself for more than two seconds in the shoes of the Notre Dame athletic director. In this case, it is Mr. Schwarbeck. And what would you do if you were him? Why do they do what they do? Why don't they do what you want them to do? And here's the camps that I've always found forming. The camp that you're in, if you're not a Notre Dame fan and you are of the belief that they should just be forced to join a conference or you get left out in the cold any year, much less this year, is you probably think that them being in a conference or them being forced to join a conference is what is best for college football. Now listen, for all you know, I may even be on your side in that, but I'm not talking about what you think or I think is best for college football. I'm talking about what Notre Dame does and what they decide to do with themselves and why they decide to do that. And so what I've always asked myself is, what if I were in charge at Notre Dame? What if I were Jack Swarbrick? What if I were the athletic director there? What if you were the athletic director at Notre Dame? And you know what the answer is? We'd do the exact same thing he does. We would have our program on the same path they're on right now. And why would we do that? Well, for some very simple reasons. Because at that point, our job would not be about what is in the best interest of college football. Our job would be, what is in the best interest of Notre Dame? And we would look around and we would say, okay, there are some suggestions from the peanut gallery here that we join a conference. What is the value proposition there? What do they have to offer us? Because currently we have our own TV deal. We have full schedule autonomy. We have a vote at the table. We have access to the college football playoff. I mean, we have the equality of a vote that the entire SEC does, the entire ACC does. You don't have to like it, but keep in mind, we're role-playing right now, which is always fun. And we are the athletic director at Notre Dame. Why would we join a conference? There are two ways, as far as I can see it, that this changes. And I've talked about this before now. I told you the first way that this would change would be if there arose a situation where Notre Dame was sitting there at the end of the year with a very competitive resume, but then their lack of being in a conference and their lack of winning a conference championship cost them a spot at the table. I thought that that, I didn't think it would definitely force action, but that would be the closest that you would come to things naturally unfolding in a way that it forced their hand. They may still not do anything. They may just say, oh, well, didn't work out for us. Better luck next year. Here's the second way. And this is really where you should redirect your ire 
if you believe it's the best interest of college football for them to join a conference. The second way would be if the university presidents and really conference commissioners um, at the behest of university presidents in some cases, in some cases, if they got together and they decided they were going to force Notre Dame's hand, could do it. They could do it. Now, for whatever reason, I'll leave that to you to figure out with a solid wink of the eye. For whatever reason, they haven't done that. So if you want to be mad at someone and you're a Georgia fan, talk to your conference commissioner. You want to be mad at someone and you're an Oklahoma fan, talk to your conference commissioner. Same across the country. Talk to your conference commissioners. I don't know that you'll get a response, but try and talk to them anyway. But I've always been fine with it. My, now I get to my personal opinion on it. I've always been fine with Notre Dame's status as an independent. It is not a risk-free proposition. This approach that they take is not without risk. And I'll tell you right now, since you think I'm probably doing everything short of wearing a golden helmet on the set, that's not the case. I just understand their plight. I understand their approach and readily admit I'd be the same way. If the sport allowed me to operate this way, I'd do the exact same thing they do. But here's what I'm telling you. Just as surely as I, as I say that, if we were to unfold a hypothetical scenario, let's say this year played out normal instead of COVID style. If this year played out as normal and Brian Kelly and his team are sitting there 12-0 and 0, and uh, they're jockeying for a playoff position and you have, for example, Alabama and Florida, both undefeated in regular season play and they go to Atlanta and Florida beats Alabama 30-23 to 23 in the SEC championship game. I have no problem putting Florida in and Alabama in over Notre Dame. In that kind of scenario, what I've seen happen is I've seen Notre Dame have a very good year, but I've also seen Alabama and Florida have very good years, and they finish the regular season with the same resume as Notre Dame, probably a stronger strength of schedule or at the very least comparable, but then, because my conference has a title game, I put both of them in a reward setting in Atlanta. I'm not punishing either one of them for losing in a game they were rewarded with for winning their conference in the regular season. That could happen to Notre Dame. That's not out of the realm of possibility. So as long as they're okay with accepting that risk, which they are, and the sport of college football allows them to exist as they do, which it does, why am I mad at them for doing nothing more than I would do if I ran that university's athletic department? Having said that, who knows what 2020 holds?